Hello everybody, my name is Richard Smith. I'm the director of the Tank Museum and today I'm going to talk about one of my favourite things. A hat. Well, a helmet, but it's a kind of hat. Now, many of you watching this video today, like me, will really enjoy visiting museums. But there's a key problem in that there are lots of museums and never enough time. So how do you pick a good one? Well, as a seasoned museum professional, I can give you some insider professional tips. Now, the first question you should be asking yourself when deciding whether or not to visit a museum is, does it have loads of tanks? And the good news is that against this criteria, the tank museum performs extremely well. Now, for the real connoisseur, the next key question to identify a great museum from a good museum is, does it have a helmet with a bullet hole? Well, I'm also glad to tell you today that against this second criteria, the Tank Museum also performs remarkably well. And here it is. Now this is a Mark VII British combat helmet, early 21st century. It belonged to a young chap called Craig Murphy. And Craig Murphy was in the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment, deployed into Afghanistan in 2010. And at the time, the Royal Tank Regiment was, was multi-rolling. They were fighting as infantrymen, uh, as well as vehicle-mounted soldiers. He was based out of a Warthog uh, armoured vehicle. And he was on patrol one day when uh, he and his patrol, he spotted a guy on a roof behaving really strangely. And he saw this guy was also holding a young child, a little girl, in front of him. And Craig described for himself what happened next. He said, The man pulled a long-barrelled weapon from behind the wall and took aim over the child's right-hand shoulder. His weapon was pointed directly at my position. I knew I could fire first with the rules of engagement that we were on and take the gunman down, but I could not guarantee that the child would be unharmed. I then made a decision to wait for him to shoot at me first with the hope that he would miss and the child would move for me to take a clear shot. Well, the other chap did fire first, but he didn't have the good grace and common decency to miss. Instead, he hit Craig on the helmet. Now, fortunately for Craig, the helmet was a very good one and stopped the shot. Now, Craig, after this, was a little groggy and he described himself as getting disco legs. Um, However, his initial analysis was indeed correct, that the bad guy had to let the child go uh, to take the shot, and that although uh, Craig himself wasn't in a position to fire back afterwards, the child had moved, and the rest of the patrol were indeed in a position to shoot back. And the perspective of the chap who fired the shot has never been told. So this is a great story from a, a really dramatic episode during the Afghan campaign, but you know, we're in a museum here, and this is now an artefact. And when we look at an object, remember that we're always looking for meaning. So what does this mean for us here today? Well, for every object, there's lots of layers of meaning. There's lots of things you can take from anything. So, We'll look through some layers about this. The first layer of meaning I would take from this is that if you're thinking of popping down to the helmet shop for some head protection, I would commend the British Mark VII Combat Helmet. This is clearly a really good helmet. It's done exactly what it was meant to do. It stopped Craig from having his head blown off from a direct hit to his head. Indeed, if I was the salesman for the helmet company, I would put this helmet 
on the front of my brochure because that's the message I want to sell. So this is a really good helmet that can stop a direct hit from about 200 meters. Fantastic. So the first layer of meaning is the physical thing itself. The second layer of meaning for me is about the opponent that Craig was facing that day and that it's very easy to write off the Afghans, the, the, the Taliban uh, against whom he was fighting as a bunch of, kind of barbaric tribesmen, but that would be completely wrong. And th this helmet says these guys were good, because if you think about it, the guy shooting at Craig, he's standing up, he's under pressure, limited time, he's taking a snapshot from immediately moving his uh, rifle into a firing position, and he gets a first time headshot from 200 meters. This guy was good. And so were his comrades. So the second thing it tells us is who the opponent is. The third thing we can learn from this helmet is about the character of a 21st century British soldier, and particularly this 21st century British soldier. And that Craig let the other guy fire first to protect the life of a little girl and a little girl that he'd never met and this is what a courage which is called a courageous restraint that was the, the name of the policy at the time this is a policy that says let the other guy shoot first and this is courage of the highest order craig knew that he was in a dangerous place but he took the shot in order to save someone else's kid. And that's phenomenally brave. And bravery, this helmet tells us that bravery isn't just about doing the shooting. Bravery is sometimes about taking the shot. So that's another layer of meaning that we see. But finally, the, the, for me, the most profound layer of meaning we can take from this object is about the tragedy of Afghanistan. Because when this helmet came to us, the, the bullet hole wasn't empty. The bullet was still inside. And we were able to identify the bullet that was still inside this helmet as a round from a 303 Lee Enfield rifle, a British rifle from the early 20th century. So what you have here is a British soldier in the 21st century shot by a rifle that had probably, or at least possibly, belonged to a British soldier from a hundred years earlier, with both people probably on the same sort of mission. So Craig was on a, on a mission here to try and bring order to a place of violence and chaos. And the fact that he shot by potentially a hundred year old rifle made by the British, probably used by the British to try and do the same thing nearly a century earlier, says that Afghanistan is, an, is a country with real issues. Afghanistan is a country where violence and war has become almost normalized. And that to try and sort out Afghanistan is never going to be a short-term project. Thank you very much. In these difficult times, obviously your support is really valued. So please do keep following us on social media, do subscribe to our channel. And, and if you've got the opportunity, perhaps order something from our shop, uh, join one of our schemes like Patreon or our friends organization, and we'll try and keep going with giving you some content to keep you informed and entertained.